Are you preparing for the ParaPro assessment? Visit www.paraprofessional-test.com for the latest test preparation material to help you pass the ParaPro assessment. Do you prefer to learn through reading? Then our ParaPro study guide is right for you. Or are you more of a visual learner? Or perhaps rushed for time? In that case, push the play button and be totally ready to ace your ParaPro in just one hour and 25 minutes with our online ParaPro test preparation course. Or are you the type of person who needs to check all the boxes and wants to feel 100% confident on test day? If that's you, then our ParaPro bundle, which includes our online course and study guide, is perfect for you. Just click the Enroll Now button. Scroll down to look at our course curriculum, which you can see includes all of the domains and competencies that you'll need to know in order to pass your ParaPro assessment. There are four reading lessons. There are seven math lessons and there's one writing lesson, all here to help you prepare for the ParaPro. Now let's go watch math lesson number two. Welcome to lesson six of the ParaPro online test prep course and the second set of our math prep lessons designed exactly for the ParaPro assessment. In this lesson, we will review adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. If it's been a while since you've worked with fractions, don't worry because this lesson will make it simple and easy to relearn. Let's begin by learning the simple steps to adding and subtracting fractions. There are three of them, and the first one is to make sure the bottom numbers called the denominators are the same. Step two is add or subtract the top numbers called the numerators and put that answer over the denominator. And step number three is to simplify the fraction if possible. Next, let's practice with a couple example problems. To begin, let's use a couple example problems that have the same denominators. Pause the video here and try to find the solution. Then come back and let's solve the problem together. In our first example, we have one over four plus one over four. Let's use the simple three-step process mentioned before. Step number one, the bottom numbers are already the same, so we'll go ahead straight to step number two. In step number two, we add the top numbers and put the number over the same denominator. Sometimes it helps to rewrite fractions in order to see them better. Here I have one over four plus another one over four. Now again, step number two says to add the top numbers, one and one, and put them over the same denominator. So right here, one plus one is two, put it over the same denominator, which is four. Now, in step number three, it says simplify the fraction. And in order to simplify, I ask myself, which number goes into both the top and the bottom? In this example, two goes into both two and four, so that leaves us with one half. What I can do is write equals, put a one on the top and put a two on the bottom, which equals one half. Let's go on to our next problem. Again, our denominators are the same, but this time, what do you notice that's different? That's right, this is a subtraction problem. Still, we can use the same three simple step process to figure out the answer. To begin, we'll take three minus one, which is two. Now notice how I got that. So as we can see, we have a three at the top and we have a one at the top. So what I can do is do three minus one, and that is two. Remember, we keep the denominator the same for addition and subtraction of fraction problems, so we're left with 6 right at the bottom. However, as step number 3 states, if we can, we need to simplify. Having 2 over 6, I'll ask myself if there is a number that goes into both 2 and 6. I know that 2 does, so I can divide the top number and the bottom number by two, and then I'm left with one third. Is that what you got also? Great, let's continue. On this page, we have two more fractions, but what do you notice that's different here? That's right, the denominators are different. Pause the video and try to solve the problem, and then push play again so that we can figure this one out together. Using our super simple three-step strategy, I know we first need to make the denominators the same. 
In order to do that, I need to ask myself, what number will both 3 and 5 go into? Pro tip here everyone, use the larger of the two denominators. Here that's 5, so I'm going to skip count using 5 until I've found a number that both 3 and 5 go into. That's going to be called the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator, or LCD, of 3 and 5 is 15. So what I need to do next is rewrite the problem beginning with the denominators being 15. But before I write the numerators, one thing I've got to keep in mind is that whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. We multiplied 3 by 5 to get 15, so we need to multiply the numerator, which is 1, by 5, which will give us a new numerator of 5. Let's do the same for the other fraction. We multiplied 5 by 3 to get to 15, so now we'll multiply the numerator, which is 1, by 3, and that will leave us with a new numerator of 3. Now we're left with 5 over 15 plus 3 over 15. Our denominators are now the same, so we can move on to step number 2, which is adding the top numbers. 5 plus 3 is 8, and we keep the denominators the same. So that's going to be 15. There isn't a number that goes into both 8 and 15 other than 1, so we don't need to simplify. Did you get 8 over 15 as well? Awesome. Next, let's have a look at the second problem, 7 over 9 minus 2 over 3. Just like the problem we just solved, this problem also has different denominators. But instead of being an addition problem, it's a subtraction problem. However, we can use the same simple three steps to find the solution. Remember, step number one is to make the denominators the same. If you haven't already, go ahead, solve this problem, and then come back to find the solution together. Using the current denominators of 9 and 3, I will think of a number that both 9 and 3 go into. Do you have it? Hmm, let's think here. 9 goes into 9 one time, and 3 goes into 9 three times, so our new denominator is 9. Let's rewrite the problem starting with the denominator of 9. Remember the rule, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. For our first numerator, that means we'll take 1 times 7, which is 7. And we'll take 3 times 2, which is 6. Now we're left with 7 over 9 minus 6 over 9. And now it's time to subtract the numbers on top and keep the numbers on the bottom the same. This will give us 1 over 9. Is that what you got also? Excellent. Let's keep going. Next, we'll look at multiplying fractions. And here are three simple steps that will help you multiply fractions. They are as follows. Step number one is to multiply the top numbers. Step number two is to multiply the bottom numbers. Step number three is to simplify the fraction if needed. Let's use a couple of example problems to practice. Here are two examples of multiplying fractions. Take a moment to pause the video and complete the problems. When you're finished, push the play button and let's figure these out together. Using the simple three-step framework mentioned before, step number one states to multiply the numbers on top. Here we have four and two. I know that four times two is eight. I'll put my divisor bar and step number two is to multiply the numbers on bottom. That means 5 times 3 for this example, which is 15. So far, we have 8 over 15. Are you with me? Excellent. The last step is to simplify. So I need to ask myself, 
Is there a number that goes into both 8 and 15? I begin with 2, and I know that 2 goes into 8, but not 15. So I move on to number 3. 3 goes into 15, but not 8. So how about number 4? 4 goes into 8, but not 15. So I try 5, and 5 goes into 15, but not 8. So how about 6? 6 doesn't go into either 8 or 15 evenly, and neither does 7, and 8 doesn't go into 15 evenly. So it looks like 8 over 15 is simplified to lowest terms. Let's move on to our next problem. This says 6 over 7 times 2 over 8. I'm going to use the same steps of multiplying on the top and the bottom and then simplifying. If you haven't already, push the pause button, solve this problem, and come back for the solution. On top, I have 6 and 2. And 6 times 2 is 12. Next, on the bottom, I have 7 and 8. And 7 times 8 is 56. Next, I notice that both of these numbers are even. So I can at least divide them both by 2. But I ask myself, is there another bigger number that I can divide them by? I wonder if 4 goes into 12 and 56. I know 4 goes into 12 3 times, and I can take half of 28 to get 14, which means that 4 goes into 56 14 times. So I'm going to stick with that. I'll divide both the top and the bottom numbers by 4, and I'm left with 3 over 14. But can that number be simplified further? 3 is a prime number, and it doesn't go into 14, so that means it's simplified to its lowest term and we are finished. One more note about multiplying fractions. Notice that having or not having a common denominator does not make a difference. We simply multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and reduce or simplify the fraction. Now, let's move on to dividing fractions. You know how much we like simple steps. So yes, we created three more simple steps to help you divide fractions, and here they are. Number one is to turn the second fraction, the one that you want to divide by, upside down. This is called the reciprocal. Step number two is to multiply the first fraction by that reciprocal. And step number three is to simplify the fraction if needed. Here are two examples that we'll need to use division in order to solve. Pause the video here. Use the steps mentioned previously to solve the problems and come back so that we can work through these together. All right, using the three-step process, I will begin by flipping the second fraction and rewriting the problem as a multiplication problem. The first fraction stays the same, so that's 1 over 2. The second fraction gets flipped, so now we have 6 over 1. And when we do that, we need to change this division sign into a multiplication sign. Now we have a half times 6, or 6 over 1. I'll continue by multiplying the top and the bottom. And this equals 6 over 2. The final step is to simplify the fraction. Here we have 6 divided by 2, and that is 3. You can write a 3 over 1, or you can just keep it as 3. Let's go on to the next problem. I'll begin the same way by keeping the first fraction as it is, and flipping the second fraction and making it into a multiplication problem. 1 over 8 times 4 over 1. Now it's a multiplication problem. The top multiplied together is 4. The bottom multiplied together is 8. I ask myself how I can reduce this, and I know that 4 over 8 is the same as 1 half. Did you get 1 half as well? Awesome! Stop wondering if this is right for you. Invest in our test prep materials. Pass your ParaPro and become a paraprofessional faster.